All right, hello and welcome back for another video on the AccuFab L4K by Shining 3D. And today I want to talk about AccuWare. It is the software that is specifically made by Shining 3D for use with their 3D printers. Um, we are currently looking at the software release uh, or version 3.1.6.29. So uh, if you find videos and things look different or work differently than what I'm showing here, it might be due to a different software version. This is the one I have right now. As far as I know, this is the most current one and it's the one I will be looking at. Okay, so when opening up the software, this is the window that opens. Now, the first thing we see is at the top, there is a workflow bar in a way. So right now we're determining some print settings, then we will go to open file, we will determine the layout, then we will create support structures, and then we will slice. This is fairly easy to understand, I think. On the top left, there is an account type of logo thing, and you can have, you can have an account uh, and log, out, uh, log in with that account to the, I don't know, Shining 3D server. I'm not entirely sure what that is good for yet, but I'm assuming you can link your printers to your account and then have some sort of support or warranty information there. Uh, on the top right hand side, we have two icons. One is a little stylized gear icon, that's the settings, and the other one is a printer overview. Now if I click that, as long as you have a printer that is turned on in your network, it will show up right here. So I'm just going to turn on the AccuFab printer that we have here, and after its booting up, after its startup sequence is complete, it show it should show up in this overview. Talking is hard today. Should you have more printers in your network that are not showing up, you can use the Add Printer button to manually add some via an IP address. Otherwise, they will uh, just automatically appear uh, if you are in the same network. I want to reiterate that. You can be in the same Wi-Fi or Ethernet network and um, in order to connect to your printers. Now the little gear icon with all the settings, you can load a project that you've previously set up, you can save a project that you have just created, there's an accuracy calibration, that beep tells me that the printer is on, so we'll be able to see it in a minute. Accur calib accuracy calibration, there's a material manager uh, with all the materials and the more detailed settings for those materials, such as, you know, uh, scale offsets, but more importantly, the support exposure time, boundary exposure time, fill exposure time, uh, wait time after exposure, all these sorts of settings. This right here is all predetermined by Shining 3D right now because we are using their DM12 material. What else do I have? Well, I've got the system settings where I can change the language, uh, for example, to German or Chinese, or import a different language. Um, I have remote assistance, something about the dongle, which is the software license, or I can update my software and the material set. Uh, that all works via this little gear icon. One thing that I haven't man uh, mentioned that is important is this import printer profile. Now, each printer has its own quirks, let's say that way, and you can compensate for these by setting up certain offsets or compensations. Uh, within the printer settings. And because of that, each AccuFab L4K will have its own profile file. It'll come together with the printer on the USB stick and you can import it into the slicing software using that button. You can either grab it from the network printer or you can grab it from that USB stick, find the, uh, the file, and then this SN dev right here, that's what you would want. And it'll contain compensation settings. For example, for the one I have right now, uh, you can see there's a small scale compensation and a contour compensation in order to ensure best possible accuracy. I could also slice for a default printer. This is basically just a, a standard set uh, with different values there, but this is the one that I have here and it's customized for that specific printer in order to yield the best results. As I said, this is where we select the material. For example, from the uh, manufacturer Shining 3D, I have all these different materials. DM12 is the one I currently have in my resin tank, so I'm gonna keep the setting on that. And then I can select the layer thickness anywhere between 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 millimeters. After I've you know, set up all the settings here that I want, I can click Next, and we will go to the Open File tab. 
Now there are two things here, either the open file menu or the recent button where you can open recently opened files, or I can select that little folder thing. And together with the AccuWare, we have two sample files. Uh, I'm gonna stick with this dental model for now, just for demonstration purposes. You can see it's opened the file now. And uh, because one is a little boring, let's just get a second one in here as well. So now we've got our two models and we'll click next in order to go to the layout. A couple things have changed. By now at the bottom, we have a sort of info panel where it tells us what printer series we're slicing for, what the serial number of our printer is, what material we're trying to use, uh, what the layer thickness is and how many layers the current models would need and how long it will approximately take. This is an approximation, not an absolute number. In addition, on the right side, we now have a model list uh, and I can click on the models in order to select them. There are two of them. I can also minimize that if it's taking up too much space. I can use this slider in order to, you know, cut the models at certain layer numbers. And uh, you can see here at what height that is and what layer number that is. I can go either from the top down or I can click this, these two reversed arrows here in order to switch it and go from the bottom up, depending on what exactly I want to have a look at. So that's what this does. Let's make our models complete again. And then down here, I have a view selector, basically. This is the default view. I can select it front, back, left, right, top, or bottom, or remove all of these icons if I don't want to see them. I'm going to stick to default view for now. Um, so that's that. And now on the left side, I have the layout options. So for this model right here, not only do I get this little uh, coordinate system ball, that lets me click and drag my model around or click and rotate if I'm on one of those uh, circles. I can also use these options to move it by absolute numbers or enter whatever I want. So minus 31, for example, uh, I can move to center. I can, if I've previously lifted it up, I can make it stick to platform, which lowers it. Or as I said, I can click and drag it any way I want to. So that's the move panel. Then there's, of course, the rotate panel. Uh, so if I want to rotate that one, for example, 90 degrees around the Z axis, I just do right that. I can also select a bottom plane. So say I've got it rotated upright like this, but I want this bottom here to be flat on the built plate. Then I can select bottom plane, click that surface, and that's exactly what the software will do. It'll place that surface on the bottom of my print bed. Last but not least, I can scale my models. I can either have it in a uniform scaling where you know it scales the same in all directions, in millimeters or inches, but I can also unclick this and then I can scale only in some directions, for example, only in the Z direction. Looks a little weird now, but you know, maybe we're making monster teeth. Last but not least, I have this auto layout button, which auto arranges the parts that I have. Right now I only have two, it's not as exciting. I can determine what the spacing between my models should be, for example, two millimeters, and if I press confirm, it'll auto arrange these uh, in a way that makes sure that I always have at least two millimeters between any two given points of my models. Uh, with just two, it's not, not as exciting, but say if we had four in here and it was really a tight fit, maybe this option can really help arrange the models in the best possible way. Now, we've layouted our models. It is time to go to support generation. You can have predetermined default settings that you can have right here. Uh, there are two types of supports. There's general supports and inner supports, which is basically touch platform only or all supports. Uh, all supports would be something uh, like within the model, for example, from here uh, to the top of the hole. This is too small to put any supports there, but you get the idea, I hope. Um, but you can disable this with that button if you want. And of course, there's a number of settings that you can change. For example, the, the contact ball diameter, um, the thickness of the support pillar, the lift height, the spacing. And if you mouse over these things, you get brief explanations and images of what that setting actually does. Uh, once you've got all these settings set up the way you want them to be, you can select the model that you want to uh, generate support for. Um, I can select both models if I want to, um, or for some reason, there we go, and then click generate. 
And the software will now automatically generate support structures for both of these models. So I'll just give it a second. You can see how certain areas of the parts were colored red, and that was this printability. Uh, the software attempts to recognize when a part is you know, hanging in midair, when there's a lot of unsupported lowest points, and it'll color those red. That's what we had before. Now, everything is printable because there are no uh, unsupported lowest points. There's support uh, everywhere where they're necessary. Um, but, for example, I don't like these two right here. I don't like that it's putting two here. I think they're unnecessary. I think the teeth would print just fine without that. So I can go into manual support generation. And now what we can see is not only are overhangs colored in shades of red, the redder, the worse it is, but I also have all these little gray blobs. And that is each a point where a support structure is being generated. For example, right here on the tooth and over there on that tooth. And if I want to remove them, I simply click them and it'll delete them. Brilliant, I've gotten rid of those two supports that I don't like. Now maybe I think that this area right here needs more supports. So I can just click on the empty surface in order to create more supports. So now that's a really dense forest right here. Just like that, I've created a bunch of supports. Decide I don't like them after all, I can just click and drag to mark them all and delete all of those support points. Now of course this would be completely unsupported so I'd need to create a few more like that. And that would work. Or if I want to undo whatever I've done, I can click Reset Support. It'll be back to what it was beforehand. Um, and then once I'm done, I can click Apply. Now I did want to remove eh, these two. And now Apply. Now it's regenerating the support structures for the model that I modified. And after that is done, we've got our files, we've layouted them, we've created supports for them, it is time to start slicing, which we can do right here. Now as soon as you start slicing, you need to select a safe location on your uh, computer, or for example on a USB stick, where that file is supposed to be saved. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now, and then the slicing begins. Uh, after the slicing is done, we can then either store it to a USB stick or send it to the printer. Just going to give it a moment here until the slicing is done, and then we will move on. Okay, so after slicing, this is the image uh, or the window that opens up. Uh, once again, we have the file name, what printer we sliced for, the material name once again, and the layer height, uh, the approximate material consumption, and how long our print will take. Now we have a few buttons down here, and um, not all of these buttons are equal. First, open folder, it'll just open the file location. Next, send. It'll, uh, this only appears as long as your printer is connected via the network to your uh, software or to the PC that you we're currently slicing on. Uh, there's send and print, which is also only available as long as the printer is connected and ready to print. Um, if I use send and print, it'll automatically upload the file to the printer and then immediately start printing, no matter whether there's still something stuck to the build platform or anything else. So you need to make sure that if you're using that command, your printer really is ready. If there's still something stuck on the build plate or the resin tank, I don't know, has the wrong resin in it or there's the lid on it, you can seriously damage the printer, uh, maybe even completely breaking it beyond all repair. So be super careful when using this command, because as soon as I push that, the printer may start printing and there's no confirmation dialog on the printer whenever using this. So it'll just start real careful with that. The one I recommend and the one I like is send. It only transmits the file to the printer that is currently connected. We can see this little upload bar. And after that, I have to go to the printer and then manually start the print job. It just ensures that everything really is ready and I'm not accidentally breaking my really expensive machine. So we're gonna wait for this upload to finish, and once it is done, we can then, you know, start the print or slice the next part or whatever else we want to do. 
Now this panel right here is the overview that I tried to open earlier when my printer was still off and I couldn't find it. It didn't find any printers. Right now you can see I have one right here and it says ready. So my printer status is also displayed. Now, if I had more than just one printer, the other ones would show up here as well. I think it's up to six printers per page. That's approximately what the size look, looks like. And then evidently there would be an, a way to look through more pages of printers. Um, so that's this printer overview, the printer list that I tried to show you earlier. It's hiding up here with these three bars. If I click on that, I go to the printer overview. So we're just going to wait until this finishes and then we can, you know, start up any other slicing process that we want. This is all I have to show you in terms of the software for now. Um, it's all I've found so far. I've only recently started using this. And I'm looking forward to experimenting a little more, slicing more parts, printing more parts, and then having more experience in the future as well, being able to show you a couple more things. So for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're still interested in more information about the Accufab L4K. If so, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. We will be adding more videos about it in the future. So for now, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and uh, I hope to see you soon. So for now, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I hope to see you next time.